Hello, I'm Kedek Shmoo, and welcome back to another Roll20.net tutorial. This week, I'm going to explain how to use the deck system. And it'll show you how you can use the deck system as an infinite token spawner, or simply just using it as a standard deck of playing cards. To start off, when you first make the campaign, you actually already had a deck um, that was pre-made. You cannot delete this deck, it's always there. Um, you guys gotta go over to the second to last tab for Game Masters, the decks and tables. Tables we will go over in next week's tutorial. I realized that um, when going over decks and learning them and learning more about them and, and, and trying to polish them out as to how to fully use them to explain it to you guys that they're quite complicated alone by themselves um, because they're used more for more than just cards um, you can play other kinds of card games in it um, and import images of all different kinds also use them as tokens which we'll get to so with that because this playing card deck is automatically uh, in there and you can't delete it any editing on it you have to make sure you know what you did and what you changed because you can't there's there's no let me click on it to open it up uh, there is no like you know restore to factory settings or you or you know undo buttons on you can always say cancel if you're changing stuff in here but you know if you remove the backing and you don't have this image again you just messed up your card if you ever want to play poker or something because this is your standard playing card deck with jokers um, so be careful when you're editing the, the the standard deck that comes with it the playing cards otherwise I recommend that if you're gonna use decks um, to make your own and then customize it as you please um, and I'm gonna actually create a brand new one here just click the add button it goes new deck it says it has zero cards in it and click show but there's not much to show if I mouse over the shuffle because there's no cards in it hide it again so I'm gonna open it up you can name the deck I'm just leave it at new deck right now and going down like we normally do in previous tutorials we have can the players see the deck that's enabled right away um, so if you don't want the players to see it, see the deck, um, let's say like I had here this monsters um, token spawner, basically, you don't want the players to see that. Uh, so you wanna you know uncheck that in that case. Then you have players can draw the cards, so players can actually use the cards. Um, again, monster token probably not gonna want that. Uh, and then if the cards are infinite, so basically this setup right here is gonna be reversed for tokens. Um, then you have a drop down menu here, which again, OBS doesn't like picking these up, but it's choosing a specific card, allowing the, the ability to choose a specific card uh, so you can, you know, pick which monster you want out of your deck. You could pick which, pick all the aces and have four of a kind for aces. I'm not a poker player. Um, <laughs> You could, but you know, you can have options. You can have the DM choose where you can only show the back of the card. The GM, the GM chooses, and you can only sh show the front of the card. Uh, and then you can have the GM and the players for front of the card or for back of the card only. Then you have the discard pile. Whether you need a discard pile or not, it's default. It is not. You can do it where they, you can choose it so only the back show whenever you discard. You can choose it where it just shows the fronts when you discard. Um, so you get decided to get a bunch of pictures of Magic the Gathering cards. You could have your discard pile right here. Um, and you can, yeah, your show backs, front, show tops, you can do draw most recent slash top card. Or you can draw the, mo the oldest slash bottom card. Uh, now I know you can't see these when I drop down the menu. Um, so when you actually make your deck, you'll be able to see these. So, But I just listed them off for you of your possible options. Uh, but moving on, 
we have when the card itself is played on the tabletop, what the options are. You can do faced up or face down uh, options here for, you know, do you want to hide and make, you know, a stealth card or do you want to have a, a just bam, you're placing it. Um, for tokens, you'd want it face up. And then you have a very important thing for token play is whether or not you can the card itself is considered a token or it's considered a drawing. Now a drawing, if I select this token here and I go to right click and go to advance and is drawing, I can click on it and the bubbles don't pop up anymore. And it's just like an image. It doesn't snap. It's, it's a drawing. It's an image. So you want to make sure it is on tokens if you're doing tokens. Otherwise, leave it as a drawing for standard cards. Not a big deal. doesn't need to snap to anything. And then you can change the card size. Like one square here is 70 pixels by 70 pixels. So if you're using tokens, you're going to want to do the math. And if it's a single square token, a medium sized creature in Dungeons and Dragons, you're going to want it 70 by 70. Otherwise, leaving it blank, you'll have just automatic sizing. Um, and if you have images that are already set up that way, it should you should leave the auto sizing and it should work just fine. But just to make sure, you can always enter these in here. Uh, if you have a bigger one that would be a large size creature in D&D, um, you'd want to double this to 140. And then they'll appear as that. So next we have what other what in, it's in the hands of the players and the GMs. You know what they see. Um, they see the number of cards that each player has. Or do you see the front of the cards? Can you open you know open hands? Can the G, the GM see everyone's cards, or just the number of cards, or none at all? Depends on what you're playing. After that, you have the where you, the part where you actually make the cards. Now, you can add cards by clicking Add Card. Pops up a new window here. You can pick a file, and uh, you have, uh, I'm gonna put an ogre in here for one of my games. Um, you can name it ogre if you want. You can leave it no card. You change however you want. Now, I have an ogre card in here. One thing that is required, you have to pick a back. Won't work without a back. It is required. Uh, it's just how it is. Um, then you can duplicate and delete, just like a lot of other menus and windows in Roll Twenty. Uh, and then you want to make sure you save the changes. And then you have your deck. Now, one thing to note: I'm going to show this here. You know, so I have this little shuffle with the little large thing, large monsters there. You mouse over; it gives you some options here. You can deal, however, there's one problem here. I'm going to deal, and it's going to come up with an error um, that says I'm at the end of my deck. I can't do this. That's because I only have one card in there, so I'm always at the end. You need at least two cards in your deck in order to make it work. Um, or for, for cards, uh, for I should say two that are for infinite decks, you need at least three for cards that are not, or decks, excuse me, that are not infinite. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and hide this one and not use it. I'm going to instead pop out two decks right here. Some of you might be familiar with this. Let me zoom in a little here. There we go. I'll get a little better background going on here so you can see what the cards are. You can actually make a Cards of Humanity deck in here if you want. Very nice. I only have a couple cards in here right now, uh, just for showing your purposes. Um, but you could have, say, playing D&D game, and you could have your friends uh, downtime at the tavern. And this tavern just happens to have cards against humanities, or a play or a character happens to have cards against humanity. Look at that. Now you can play. Um, so we can click the deal here, and we can deal... We'll just deal two cards. There's only three cards in there. Actually, we will not, if we're going to play Cards Against Humanity, we're going to have that. See how it pops up like that? We're going to actually pop, click it. It's going to flip over, and then we're just going to drag it on here. And now it's a drawing. So there you go. 
why can't I sleep at night? Now let's go to the cards here, the white cards. Let's scroll down here, we're gonna deal. We'll deal two cards to the only player in here. Cancel that, right click this, click add to turn order here. He's in the turn order now. That's a nice feature there too. You right click on any token and you can do add to turn order. Um, or add turn, but add to turn order and add it to turn order, add to turn order, there it is. If I, let's see here, let me show the playing cards. This is a cool way to uh, set it up to where you draw a card for your initiative. So now who's ever got the higher card go first. So Mad Dog would go first unless you have a different system you're using. But that's a cool feature to do. You can draw a deal cards into the turn order. Otherwise, let's get rid of that one. And let's actually play a hand here. We'll do two to him and we'll deal. Ran out of cards because I only have a limited amount of cards. So he gets one card. I won't drop that in here. Now that was as simple as, I'm gonna del just delete this, shuffle this. That was as simple as, oops, select the person. Cards appear down in the bottom here. Click it, opens it up, drag it, ooh, gotta have the right selection. Drag it on the, to the tabletop. That simple. And apparently, why I can't sleep at night is because of racism. Um, but the recall option allows you to shuffle after you recall. You can recall all to that, but you do have to do it per deck. So we'll recall all. And then I'll shuffle. Um, and then you can hide it. And now, to leave it off, I'm going to show you how the monster token cards work. So now I created a deck. It's monster-sized medium-sized monsters, excuse me. Medium-sized monsters. I typed in medium-sized monsters for the name of it so I know what it is when I can pop it up. I'm gonna actually show it. I don't want the players to see this deck because this is from my monsters. I don't want the cards to be, uh, the players to be able to draw the cards because it's from my monsters. And But I want the cards to be infinite because I don't want to run out of monsters. We can spam them and annoy them. But I do want to be able to pick a specific card. Now picking a specific card allows me to pick a specific monster from my deck if I know a specific one I want to come out. Don't need a discard pile. No need for it. I'm not using them as actual cards. I'm using them as tokens. Want it so it's face up to make sure the players can see it. Otherwise they're going to see a face down card that says medium sized monsters and not know what it is. And then the big thing you want to make sure, like I said before, it's can, the cards are considered tokens. And then I have the size in here for medium size, just in case. Um, I like to separate the large and medium ones if I was to do it to have um, e easy organization. Um, and then I wanna make sure that nobody can see, no players can see the front of the cards or um, any number of card, the number of cards, if I happen to have cards I given to players, given to myself or something like that. And then the, num the, the cards themselves, and I can add more, like I said before, and the back end. Very simple. And now, if I save this here, we're gonna go here. I'm just gonna click and drag. There's a Goblin. You can click this again, and now I have an extra option here called Choose. So I'm gonna click Choose, and we're gonna drag my Vampire onto the screen. I can pick what monsters I wanna pull out. Very nice, very handy. Um, I learned the hard way <laughs> through a game that when I made character journals for my monsters, for like a goblin and I just keep dragging new characters out, let's say the goblin and the vampire are the good characters and these Ujis are the bad characters. Well, if I subtract five health, it subtracts them from every single token because they're all connected to one character sheet or character journal. That can mess up your game greatly if uh, you got multiple characters or multiple tokens on the screen and only one of them takes damage. But with this, 
there is no damage on this token. There's no health on this token. So I'm going to have to, every time I lay one down, I'm going to have to, you know, put something in here. But that's as simple as just clicking that, clicking that. Now I do minus three, it goes down to, you know, three. Very simple setup. Bam, there it is. You got a bunch of them, it might get a little tedious. Um, but at least you can just sit here spamming them. And you can even have it so, you know, it's completely random. Like, completely random. Although I keep getting the same vampire over and over again. Um, <laughs> there's only two cards and 50-50 chance that I'm losing horribly. But, there it is. And then you can easily recall them all. Well, he didn't go away, but recall them all. And then hide it out. So that's decks. And that's how decks work. Um, to review real fast, you always start off with a standard playing card decks um, that you cannot reset if you change, you cannot delete. So be careful when you edit those. It's got your standard playing card deck. You cannot create a new one unless you have those images of the cards themselves. You can play Cards Against Humanity if you want to put that in here. Any other kind of card game that you can get the images for and put them in here and play it. You can also create monster tokens. So you can have an unlimited supply of your NPCs or monsters or whatnot. Um, you could even have a, a deck full of NPCs for towns if you need to play some real fast or whatnot. Um, that sums everything up. I thank you for watching. I hope you learned a lot, and I hope this helps in your next game. Remember to follow by hitting that subscribe button for the next latest update. Like this video with that thumbs up button for me, please, and share it with your friends. Again, thank you for watching. I'm Chaotic Shmoo, and I will see you next time. Bye, 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 bye.